Let's have another brief look at the training inference trade-off. I already talked about it in yesterday's Finkster video, but um, I think maybe we we are uh, it would be warranted to have a deep dive dive because I think it's one of the more important uh, theorems in uh, in the AI industry. Okay, so first of all, this one is pretty pretty simple slide. So say we look at the GPT uh, three model, and on the y-axis we see the compute cost of a single inference operation in flops. So we have ten to the power of twelve flops, and on the x-axis we see the compute cost of training. Um, so we have training on the x-axis versus inference on the y-axis, and uh, you can see that training has ten to the power of twelve more operations or computational um, complexity, um, computational costs as well, um, then uh, as inference, right? 10 to the power of 12 is like a, a trillion times or so. So is it a trillion? Yes, it's a trillion. Okay, so you have a trillion times more overhead, roughly, like an order of magnitude. Uh, of course, it can depend, like there can be an order of magnitude like uh, variance uh, depending on the on the concrete models, but uh, so you have between say 100 billion and a trillion uh, times difference in costs for a, a single inference op uh, um, operation. But there's a very important uh, relationship and this is like very complicated relationship between training and inference. The, and this relationship is complex, right? Because we, we, we cannot really look at a single inference operation. Um, we don't train a model due to a single inference operation. We train a model uh, because we want to do we want to run many inference operations and we and in order to 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 um, have good decisions to make good decisions we need to look at the aggregate costs of all inference over lifetime of a model and this is a, like a more accurate way of determining the cost of inference the computational cost of inference because now um, if we have the aggregate cost of all inferences then we might find out that this over the lifetime of the model will often greatly exceed the cost of training. So for example, if you have the ChatGPT model, we train, we have a lot of uh, training cost and training overhead, a lot of training uh, computational units we, uh, we need to deploy in our cloud. Then uh, we, have, we might have 100 million users running inference on this, on this uh, model. So we train it once, we have millions of, t uh, of operations and in aggregate, even though the cost of one inference operation is many orders of magnitude smaller than training, the aggregate costs, we can have many, of, many orders of magnitude kind of users. So the user base can be 100 million easily, right? So we might see a 100 million times uh, um, paying this cost of inference. And um, here is the important theorem and a very important relationship between training and inference. And this is, most people actually don't understand this or don't have it on their radar. Maybe they, most people could understand it, it's very easy trade-off, but they don't have it on their ra radar. And this, this, this uh, leads them to um, argue in a completely wrong way. So let's have a look, for instance, of one of these wrong arguments. Here is a researcher. He's, he argues uh, what is going to change in the AI chip market. Inference will dominate, not training. Um, this is all like um, he says. What I took away is that there's some point in the future where the amount of compute any company is using for running models of on users' requests will exceed the cycles they are spending on training. So th this is like a researcher, a very skilled researcher that r that writes articles for a decade in the ML space, even right. Uh, but he's a researcher and he obviously doesn't doesn't completely get the trade-off because the trade-off would argue against them. Also like Chamath, um, the like a billionaire uh, investor who invested in the company Croc. Maybe we can check out the company as well. Here, here we have the company Croc. This one is like a billion dollar company. The main idea of Croc is to disrupt NVIDIA by focusing on inference rather than uh, training and um, and they argue okay inference is the most important thing right because we have all the AI applications uh, um, running in the cloud to provide access to users so if you have more usage we will see more inference this logic it's I mean it makes a lot of sense right you would think okay AI, if we have more users if, if, if they are really like killer applications in the AI space then we will see more AI inference so the AI inference compute will dominate eventually. But this is actually not what the training inference trade-off shows us. 
it is it is completely completely wrong it is like 180 degree wrong and many people like don't get this many people are still arguing from this inference compute point of view so okay so this is the this is this uh, training inference trade-off you have on the y-axis the total compute spend and on the x-axis the inference training compute ratio and you see that there's like a, um, there will never be a big deviation from a situation where you have roughly the same inference and training compute why is that so maybe let's first have a let's first have a look at at the trade-off um, itself uh, so the trade-off there are many ways of trading in inference compute against training compute so we can spend more inference compute in order to reduce the training compute or we can spend more training compute in order to reduce the inference compute and it's like think think of it like a knob that we can we can uh, uh, like pull in in the one direction or the other or a lever that we couldn't pull in the one direction or the other direction and um, and for instance if you have a situation where we like let's have, have this example that I gave yesterday So if you have a situation where where um, yeah this is a, this is a great situation if you have uh, this situation where a lab like a an AI lab or a company spends one set of flop of compute on training and 100 set of flops on inference so this would be the future say Jamath and and uh, and this research I just uh, showed you. Um, Argued for right, so we have one one set of flop on of compute on training, a hundred set of flops on inference. So the model is used heavily. Then they could make the economic decisions. They can use the inference training compute trade-off using the techniques I showed here, like varying scaling policy (MCTS), pruning the model, so making the spending more time on training to make the model smaller, uh, but keeping the overall quality of the models intact. They could. We can use sampling. So there are many ways. We can use a chain of thought. We can. Use, there are many ways of spending more time on training in order to reduce the time on compute. And uh, so this trade-off gives us a way of increasing the training compute by a factor of ten. Yeah. So we can go from one set of flop to ten set of flops. But what we get out is that we can reduce the inference compute by a factor of 10. And the inference compute was a dominating part, was a bottleneck of the overall system, right? So we spent 100 set of flops on inference. Reducing it by a factor of 10 gives us more cost improvements than we have to pay for by increasing the small, the tiny training uh, compute by 10. So, by, so we, we multiply this small number by 10, but what we get out of this is uh, dividing this huge number by 10 so which means we can gain much more dividing this huge number by 10 then we would have to pay multiplying this small number with 10 so uh, so in overall like previously we had 101 set of flops of compute uh, one set of flop was spent on training 100 on inference but now after the after in, after manipulating this trade-off um, towards tr spending more on training we now spend only 20, right? We, we multiply this with 10, so we have 10 set of flops on training, but what we get out of is, uh, is we reduce it by 10, uh, 10 times, the set, the set of flops compute on inference, so we have 10 plus 10 equals 20 set of flops for training and inference. So, uh, which means like we have a 5x re reduction of cost in this way. And this is basically what this trade-off shows, shows us, right? So we we will uh, the parameters can be different right sometimes it's maybe a bit less effective maybe we need to spend 10 times more on training in order to save five times on computers so so there are some some like variables that influence this decision but uh, they will there will never be such a runoff of so there will never be a huge imbalance between the two they are always kind of balanced and um, and we can also see it in the real world so for instance um, if you look at real companies like NVIDIA, NVIDIA shows us that roughly inference is roughly 40% of NVIDIA data center revenue and the rest is training. You, so you see they are in the same ballpark of, of, uh, of compute. And it is, like, it is after scaling up the overall AI training 
and AI inference or AI compute market by a factor of 1 million or so in the last couple of years. After scaling it up to this huge base, we are still kind of in the balance situation where we spend roughly the same uh, to, for inference and we spend on training. Uh, so the situation al already shows us uh, that the trade-off is, is a real-world situation. This is a real world, this, this impacts decision making in the real world. And we can also see it on uh, for OpenAI that spends roughly you know, OpenAI training versus inference are on the same order as their annual model training costs, right? So they spend roughly the same on inference than they spend on, on training. So you see this training inference trade-off everywhere in the real world which is really, really interesting. There is the, and the reason we see it everywhere in the real world is that we can, we can spend more, so we can, we can trade those two against each other in order to reduce the overall costs. And um, yeah, show me the incentive, I show you the outcome. This is the incentive. Pla tra using, manipulating this trade-off is the incentive to, um, uh, the incentive is to reduce costs. We can do so, we can, we can reduce cost by manipulating this trade-off so it will get manipulated and we see the end state which is roughly the same um, like a balanced situation between training and compute the end state we see in many real world like in in, in all real world um, scenarios basically so all major ai companies more or less adhere to this trade-off and i think this is one one of the problems of of the argument used by startups such as Croc. Their main selling point is that inference compute will dominate. Um, actually, if you understand the training inference trade-off, then you would never issue such a statement, right? So they, you would never say things as things such as training as a development phase is very expensive. Inference is where AI workloads start to earn their keep. And that's a challenge for business leaders developing an AI strategy, moving from training to inference. And I think they know better they just use it to pitch their startup and to pitch their strategy, maybe to to uh, to get to to sell their shares or sell their uh, stake in their in their stake of ownership in their startup uh, to investors. They and for some investors that are like naive, they they believe this kind of statements. But I think most of the uh, experts in the in the chip industry actually know about this trade-off. And the counterintuitive insight is that if you really believe that fast inference is very very important then you would actually spend even more on training. You would spend 90% of the time in training, right? If, if fast inference is all there is, and, and I understand this argument, right? There's market pressure because for real world applications, such as if you have self-driving cars, you want very fast inference, right? Or, or if you have um, humanoid robots that need to make decisions quickly, or if you have just like um, high frequency trading uh, algorithms also based on large language models. If you want responsive large language models, all of those, uh, basically, if you have retrieval augment augmented generation, you want re responsive LLMs. So there is market pressure for real world applications to, to favor inference latency and to spend even more time on, and if you want to favor inference latency, we don't, we don't want to spend more time on inference, but less compute time on inference, which means that we want to scale up this training compute uh, in order to reduce the inference compute. So if we care about real world uh, latency of, of uh, and I mean, sorry for, for, for repeating this point over and over again, but companies such as Croc are basically um, issuing this nonsense statement and don't get caught by the, by the marketplace. For, uh, for, for saying s stupid things like this. And this, that's why I, re I keep repeating these statements, right? I keep repeating and I, and I even recorded this, this uh, second video about this trading inference trade-off. If you really care about fast inference, you need to scale up training. You need to prioritize training. You will even increase the training compute and reduce the inference compute. Because the more compute you need to do at inference time, the... Um, the the longer it will take and the higher your latency for real world applications so you want the small models you want the huge amount of training compute and companies such as croc are therefore have a difficult situations to be in because nvidia is already the training 
master maestro right they provide the best training hardware out there now they have launched their blackbird chip which is kind of a completely dominating uh the training and also inference market and it's uh like impossible for small startups to compete with with uh this superior technology uh yeah okay so i think i think i made my point here i hope uh, you understood understood the uh, training inference trade-off there is a lot of literature online there are many techniques to influence this trade-off where we can spend more invest more into training to for instance reduce the model sizes uh but keeping the keeping the quality the same uh, for instance sampling or other ways chain of thought uh, we uh, by, 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 by spending more time on training we reduce the time on influence and the other way around if we, if we ha would have like a situation where we spend 100 units on training but one unit on aggregate inference um, then you, we, ca we could actually reduce the, uh, the training time by a factor of 10 and increase the inference time by a factor of 10 uh, or inference compute and um and we would we would end up in a more balanced situation again so it is not actually so we cannot we cannot see from 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 an um over um, so, so so we cannot deduct from from an over emphasizing uh ai training that AI is overhyped that we don't have AI applications because the real AI, AI applications will still use training to improve the inference compute workloads and um, and that's why we will always see like a 50 50 situation of training and inference and it will never be like a 100 to 1 ratio or something like this as um, Jamath argues and many other people in the space still argue to this day even though this is a very well researched um, area and uh, not only well researched but it's also well documented it also can be seen in any large-scale ai uh, company in the world okay thanks for uh, being an active uh, thinkster listener i appreciate having you here and uh, yeah give me a like and subscribe to this channel appreciate you once more and see you in the next video bye